of my energy ever drained. It's just hard to put one foot in front of the other right now and keep moving. And with one arm, survival is definitely, definitely extremely tough. <laughs> This time on Survivor Man, it's the middle of winter, and I'm headed to the northern reaches of Ontario in a land called Tamagami, known for its giant old-growth forests, expansive beauty, constantly changing weather, and in the wintertime, frigid temperatures. To fly a helicopter or bush plane up here, your knowledge of survival is not an extra, it's a way of life. Bush pilots are a tough breed. Small bush planes with floats or skis were built to fly, not survive a crash, and many pilots have lost their lives strapped into their seats. But this is not a rescue operation. My crew is taking this wreck to my survival location. Hopefully there's enough of a plane left to help me survive, until I make my own way back through the frozen, snow-covered bush. This is the Canadian North in the dead of winter. Out here, you have to persevere, because your very existence is being put to the test. And the only alternative is death. The bush in winter offers no forgiveness. You either adapt quickly and survive, or you die quickly. I have to spend the next seven days in this frigid north alone. flown into a remote location deep in the dense forest. The wrecked plane that will serve as my only shelter is transported ahead of me. So that's one plane wreck, 50 pounds of camera gear, no food, no water, no matches. It's not out of place to feel intimidated by the frozen, isolated forest below. But it's my job to survive out here for the next seven days completely alone and to eventually walk out. It's a tall order. Here we go. Thanks, Peter. Have a good week. Stay warm. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. Here we go. That's it. I'm alone now. What is the number one priority of survival? Depends on where you find yourself. In the desert, it's water. In an exposed area, it's shelter. Here, in the Canadian North, in the dead of winter... I've got one option and one option only right now. Get a fire going as soon as possible. I just gotta figure out how to do that without any matches. This plane wreck is from an actual accident, a double fatality. It's up to me to see how I can use it for survival. The crew will come back and pick everything up at the end of the week. Plane battery. Bust up gas tank. Whew. About two liters of dirty gas in there. Be real careful I don't start sweating too much. I'm gonna put the fire on this side of the airplane, the inside, because it's just gonna be too windy out on the lake anyway. And I found a piece up here. Gonna work just fine as a base. 
So why don't I practice everything first and show it like a pro? Well, I like to keep it real. Fire with a battery, wires, and some gasoline? I've never tried before. If this works, it'll be a first for me. Found one birch tree and a, cedar, a couple of cedars, and so I was able to finally get some cedar bark and birch bark, which will help a lot. Maybe if it was shorter, it'd be better. Ah, I better put my gloves on for this. Okay. Oops. All right. That's what I'm working with. I don't like playing with gasoline. Makes me nervous. Put one right. So there we go. Let me show you. Resting on the terminal and touching the gasoline rag. I'm actually nervous. Oh. Come on. Hmm. I'm gonna try this another way. I'm hoping this will kind of work like a bit of a cup. We'll pour some gasoline into. Have all this birch bark and gasoline soaked rag ready. I once heard that it's not the gasoline that ignites, it's the fumes. So I need to have a little pool of gas and an enclosure that will hold in the fumes ready for a spark. Okay, got some. Sweet. Whoa, let's get this gas can out of here. <laughs> oh, tell me that wasn't a thing of beauty. I love it when a plan works out. All right. Now that I got a wicked fire going, I'll have to keep it going as much as possible. Um, and the sun's already going down. I mean, it's fading real quick. My only hope right now is to try to outfit that airplane in a way that I can survive the night in it. The only option I have for tonight is to hold up in the cockpit of the plane itself. Not exactly airtight, not exactly warm, but it's all I've got. Well, this isn't going to be pretty. Don't kid yourself. A survival shelter is rarely comfortable. I just need to block out the wind and keep in as much body heat as possible. Well. I don't think I can do much more. Not for tonight. Night comes in pretty early this time of year. Thanks for a long night. The onset of a frigid winter night is a most sobering reality. And I may be a glutton for punishment as my own filmmaking plans are about to challenge my ability to survive. Northern Ontario, winter, day two. Stuck inside a drafty, cramped plane wreck. too cold to uh, just wake up and start filming. Not until I stoke the fire a bit. My biggest concern, of course, is the cold. And above all else, I've got to keep a fire going. Of course, I've got to uh, see about getting some food. And uh, I can rehydrate myself just by uh, 
by eating snow for now. Everyone says, don't do it, don't eat snow. Well, I don't have any water, so I'm eating snow. And lastly, well, I do know where I am, and uh, I know approximately where I need to get to get back home, but it's gonna take a few days to walk out of here. So for now, I'll just try settling in here. My challenge this time is to make my own way back. I watched the route in as we flew, about 70 miles straight north. But first, I'll stick it out here and try to gather some supplies for the journey out. If you're wondering why I've got such strange looking clothing, when I knew I was gonna be having to survive in the Canadian North in the middle of winter, for me, it's gotta be wool. It keeps about 80% of its insulation value even when it's soaking wet. But the best part is you can get real close to a fire and you don't have to worry too much about sparks or, or, uh, or anything like that. It's not gonna melt on you. So it's gotta be wool. It's rugged, it's tough, works for me. It's heavier, but it works. Well, let's see what I have to survive with this time. Of course, I've got my wool blanket and my ax. Those are two items that, well, nothing else matters. It's just, you won't get me out in the middle of the Canadian wilderness in the middle of winter without an, a good ax and a wool blanket. I also have, of course, always a good multi-tool. And uh, this little guy here is supposed to be a survival saw. I'm gonna try it out, see how it does cutting wood. Other than that, of course, I have the airplane. That could help a lot. Well, I've been thinking. Something I've never shown is what you'd have to do if you were actually injured. And in a plane crash situation, if you did survive, it's highly likely that you're injured. So, let's do this with an injury this time. Just kidding. But, let's simulate an injury. So let's assume that my injury is a busted up left arm, maybe from the elbow down or something, smashed in. I've got to keep it up and keep it warm. Now this plane is actually made out of fabric covered with paint. The wings are metal, but, uh, and the fabric comes right off the paint. So quite a bit of a makeshift sling here. But if it works, it works. Wrist is immobilized, arm is immobilized. I'm now officially injured. I am not looking forward to having the use of only one arm, but for now, this will give me a very small taste of the difficulties associated with an injury. At least I don't have to okay. deal with the pain. Well, all the area, sort of just down in through there, towards the back of the plane, that's wide open. And I've got to cover that up to make sure I can try and get this as windproof as possible. Right now, the clouds have come over, which have made it a little bit warmer, but the wind is blowing up. So I'm gonna try and make this at least a bit windproof, if not insulated. And this door really is just in the way because it stops the heat from coming into me whereas I might be able to use it to block off some of these other holes. Hey! Well, I'm getting a quick lesson in the difficulties of surviving with one arm. Not everything can be ripped off of a plane using only an axe and one arm. But all of this wiring gives me an idea. So I've got this one guy ready to go. You see the loop? And uh, what I want to do is tie it off to uh, 
one solid object. I think right here will work really good. So I see there's some fresh tracks right here. And you can kind of see that they all converge on the same one spot here. If you find a place where the rabbits are already naturally uh, funneled into a certain spot, and you just reinforce that funneling and put the snare right in the middle, you stand a much better chance of catching one. I'm calling them rabbits, snowshoe hare up here. Just reinforcing this funneling. I think this is why I find the winter time is the easiest time of year to uh, snare any particular game. First of all, you can see where their tracks are. Okay. That should be pretty good. Uh, I just got to put my noose in place. There we go. If I can get out of here without wrecking their own trail and creating too many footprints of my own, I'm better off. Snaring can be a very effective hunting method, but it's a tough way to go. As the animal pushes hard with its legs to get away, it only serves to tighten the noose around its neck until it suffocates. All right, well, that's one snare. I've got to set up at least another five. Ten would be even better. Setting up snares or deadfalls is all about bettering the odds. There are no guarantees. If I can catch two or three, I'll have enough to eat now and enough to take with me for my trek out of here. Finding and collecting firewood is an ongoing process. No matter what you're doing, collecting wood along the way all the time is a survival essential. This tree is small enough to be manageable with only one arm and not too far from the plane crash site. Working too hard can prove deadly as the combination of sweat and the frigid cold can lead to hypothermia. Oh. to set up the cameras and uh, work on this survival saw to see how well it works. So I gave it a little little practice pull just to see. And look, here's the one end, here's the other end. Busted right off one pull and it snapped right off. Here's the little ring that's supposed to go on. It's supposed to go on right there. Huh, useless. You know, it says that this is supposed to be good for a snare as well. That's a mighty small snare. If you ask me. The ice up here this time of year can be three to five feet thick. It's worth the effort for now to see if I can chop through to try for some fish. But I've got to watch out that I don't blow out the muscles in my one arm. That's enough for now. Just looking at this metal, I got a bit of an idea. Something I might be able to do here. If I can get a piece of it off. Ow! Not that way. If I can bend this metal into shape, I may have a pot for boiling. But first I want to burn off the paint. There, let me show you what it looks like inside my little shelter. Well, believe it or not, I feel fairly protected inside this little plane here. It's not very warm, but it's close to the fire and I am getting some residual heat in here. It weighs heavy on my mind begin the long trek out across the lakes and rivers and through the dense snow-covered bush.
Well, if the sun seems pretty high in the sky for a morning shot, that's because it is. It's taken me hours just to get warmed up again and get my cameras working and batteries warmed up, keep this fire going. Got terribly cold last night. The wind stopped, the sky opened up, and that meant bitter cold temperatures. I don't want to stay here much longer. I'm going to make preparations to get out of here. I also lost time this morning going to check all my rabbit snares. Nothing. And not, <laughs> not a half a foot from the plane wreckage, there's fresh rabbit tracks. So one went right by me last night. Once again, using the wreckage itself may help me to survive. I've been wondering what this little tail is. Whenever I've been out fall or winter camping, everybody is always looking for a place to sit down, put their little gloves on a little log and sit on it, try not to get their bum wet. Well, I don't have to look for any place. I can just sit down wherever I want. Simple and silly, but it sure is effective. There is no way I can carry the battery with me on my way out. But there are yet other pieces of the plane that'll help me start a fire while I'm on the trail. I'm gonna take these squares of cotton. All I wanna be able to do is try to get, get the cotton into a, an enclosed space. Like a tin can would be awesome. Close it up like that. And I'm gonna put it on the fire, but not let the flames actually get to the cotton. And that way I make what's called charred cloth. And you'll see how that can help me out later, if it works. The cotton is hidden from the flames inside the folded metal and left to blacken, but not burn. Survival calls for constant multitasking, keeping an eye out for essentials every step of the way, like firewood or food, always improving your shelter. You know, survival stuff, like filming a TV show. didn't oh get done okay I can put this back in but you see the black stuff there nicely charred this is gonna work I think okay so this is charred cloth and all I have to do is try to get a spark to land right onto it and it should catch a glow and with any luck fire will follow instead of being burnt to ash the cloth is charred and turns into what is essentially very thin charcoal, ready to take a spark. My idea of getting through this ice to catch fish is going nowhere. I can't keep this up. The risk of damaging my one good arm is too great, especially knowing that my challenge is to head out of here soon. Sleeping during these winter nights is at best a few minutes here and there while I try to keep from freezing. So in the noonday sun, I catch an hour of sleep while I can. But the sun may not last long. Oh man, has my energy ever drained? It's just hard to put one foot in front of the other right now and keep moving. 
but that's what you got to do. You got to have that firewood, got to keep the fire going. And with one arm, survival is definitely, definitely extremely tough. But there still is one thing I can do with one arm. I can play with my harmonica. To Les Stroud, from the students of Sawmill Valley Public School. Oh yeah. Ooh. Three days without food. I think I'll call it a night. The weather today was perfect for travel. Tomorrow, I'll try to take a stab at leaving. That way I won't be late, which would worry the rescue crew. It's too cold. Too cold. My plans were to leave, but Mother Nature had other plans for me. the cold. Another frigid night. Clouds came in. They brought with them a storm. Winds blowing fiercely from the south, making this protected little shelter into an exposed shelter. It's four days now without food, and I get barely an hour of sleep each night. I'm tired of dealing with a fake injury. The sling's coming off. I'd rather just get out of here. Back to warmth, back to food. Might as well take a walk and check my snares anyway. Boy, this blew up real quick. I may not be getting anywhere. Not today. If this storm keeps up, I'll be stuck at the plane wreck another night. Got a snare up in here, I'll check. <laughs> Check it out. I had set this snare up only 12 hours before using the wires from the plane. Sometimes you get lucky. Well. Don't really know what to say. I, uh, you know, I hate to take the life of any animal, but in a matter of survival, then uh, if it's a case of live or death, life or death, all creatures are fair game. Dinner. This is not easy weather, just keep your lenses clean. The snow is getting finer and finer and that's got me worried because I'll tell you, if this turns into freezing rain, well, I'm not traveling anywhere, that's for sure, and it'll be kind of miserable. Well, time to do the deed with the rabbit. More correctly, snowshoe hair. still with me on this. What do you want to do now is take the rabbit's fur off just like you're taking off a sock and uh, you know sort of a wet sock like so that it rolls back on itself. It's uh, actually much easier since he didn't 
freeze on me. If he was caught early in the night, he'd be frozen solid. So, I'll just finish this. Oh! <laughs> oh, my hands are just frozen. Hang on. If you can capture game this big, there are many more uses for them other than food. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Well, I said to take it off like a sock is because the fur on the inside, we now have essentially a sock. So I'm gonna save you the grossness of uh, taking the guts out and uh, get this guy cooking. Well, my fear has come to pass. The snow has turned into freezing rain. There's really not much I can do but sit here and, uh, and uh, cook this rabbit, try to stay out of the rain in my little shelter here. After four days without food, it's easy to get over the sadness of killing an animal and attend to the most basic of human needs, the need for food. This is where my filmmaking and my actual survival meet. Oh, in case you haven't noticed, I completely abandoned the whole one-arm survival thing. That's enough of that, man. Now, I just want to get this food into my stomach. Then I want to try and get out of here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to be so nice. Look at this. Oh. Now, this is going to taste good. Wow. Mm. Rabbit is a good survival food in the fact that they're not hard to catch. However, there is a thing called rabbit starvation. See, they're completely lean, no fat. And if you eat nothing but rabbits, so you catch a couple of dozen and exist over the next month or so eating nothing but rabbits, you bring yourself into protein poisoning. You've got to get fat somehow. But that's because most people don't continue to eat the internal organs and the brain and the eyes and even the bones. And you can bet I'm going to finish off every little bit of this rabbit tonight. Well, it was freezing rain or snow all night long. Fire's pretty much out. A few coals, that's about it. Maybe it's time I make my way out of here. Five days, and finally my chance to get going. I can use what I broke off of the plane to help me travel, and the rescue crew will come in later to clean up the mess. I lost a full day due to the bad weather. It would have been nice to get another snowshoe hair or two but at least eating one, bones and all, has renewed my spirit and energy. The weather may slow my progress yet. If I don't make it back on my own, the rescue crew will come looking for me. I hate it when that happens. Weather turned pretty nasty here late in the day. I'd love to be able to build a nice rock shelter with covering and everything, but you know what? I'm on the move, and uh, I think rather than put the energy into building a big shelter, I'm gonna put the energy into gathering a big whack of firewood 
And if I have to, I'll just sit beside the fire all night. I've got a pace going that'll keep me warm without the risk of sweating. A 14 hour long night requires a lot of heat. Piece like this makes for a great base for a fire to start off with. It's pretty hard to get a fire going right on the snow. It sucks the moisture right up. Got big wood, got the base, got my little spot, tinder. It's a risky decision to make, but I think the effort of trying to build a solid shelter would be better put into maintaining a big fire. There's a lot of easy wood nearby. Perhaps a little unorthodox for the survival manuals, but I know it can work. That's the right stuff. Oh. More freezing rain. Without the battery and gasoline, it's now my chance to see if my plan for fire will work out. Remember the cloth that I charred? Now is when it has to help me. And along the way, I stopped to get a drink just in a little stream bed. I looked and saw some different rocks there. And uh, I just tried a couple with my axe. And sure enough, I've got one rock here that made a spark off the axe. So I'm just holding the axe just right above it. Let's see if I can. Come on. Oh. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Okay, I don't want to mess around too much, but I will show you. All right, put it in my cedar. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, indeed. Once you got the flame, Birch bark time. Nothing takes a flame better than birch bark. Even when it's soaking wet, it burns well. The bark of a birch tree is loaded with oils. See that? That was just a rock right from here in Tomogamy. Some cloth that I charred that came off the airplane, and my ax. Fire. It takes a big, hot fire to make it through the night. Size does matter. All right, have a look at what I'm trying to follow. It's really faint in this overcast, but you could just barely see old snowmobile tracks. Sunny and sometimes cold, very cold. To rain, to cloudy, it's changing nearly every hour. Kind of a weird week. following a snowmobile trail. But that's no guarantee of rescue. Up here, you could walk for more than a week on established trails and never see a soul. 
I am very, very lucky that I had that thaw a few days back packing the snow. It means I can get by without needing snowshoes, as long as I still have a trail to follow. Two feet to either side of this trail, and I'm thigh deep in snow. The trail seems endless, but it's almost impossible for the human psyche not to continue on. Ever moving forward, believing that salvation lies just around the next corner. It's a dangerous mantra. And now I've broken one of my own cardinal rules. I've warmed up, but I let myself get wet with sweat. Stopping now without a ready-made shelter or fire, and I could easily freeze. Sticking to the trails means I shouldn't get lost, even in the dark. So what am I doing walking around in the frigid night air of a northern Ontario winter? Well, I made a decision. See, it's sixth night. Tomorrow's the seventh day. I'm supposed to be making my way out of here tomorrow. So I figured rather than sleep 15, inter 15 minute intervals on uh, my Mouth's frozen. All night long, oops, I just keep walking. See, I can't get lost if I follow these snowmobile trails. Then I should be good to go, as long as I don't hit a lake. Uh, I can sleep tomorrow in the sun, and right, I'm awake anyway. Uh, I'm gonna pull an all-nighter. Well, I made it through the night. As exhaustion sinks into my bones, it's all about the constant push forward, out of the cold, away from the wind. My thoughts are of warm places and hot food. Sometimes, I think my production team is waiting for the chance to film my failure to survive. Perhaps hoping that they will be there to catch Survivor Man, face down in the snow, frozen solid, one hand on the camera, tape still rolling. For now, since I'm still a few miles from civilization, they get their chance at a small rescue. I'm sure they'll never let me live this one down. I think I could have made it back before night falls again, but I'll take the lift when I can get it. This is one frostbitten Canadian boy, happy to go home. <laughs> 